Uh, sure. The, uh, the International Space Station is 15 countries trying to work together for decades. Historically, that's pretty significant and really difficult and improbable given geopolitics. And yet, since the early 1990s, it's been working. <clears throat> but what just happened this week is one of the members, Russia, of course, um, <clears throat> got a new director of their space agency, which they call Roscosmos. And uh, the new director's name is uh, Yuri Borisov. And after 10 days in the job, he announced uh, Russia is going to pull out of the International Space Station Agreement sometime after 2024 and build their own space station. So uh, obviously that would be hugely disruptive and, and be contrary to what's been going on for three decades. So there was uh, quite a bit of, um, of reaction all around the world, um, but I think it's really good to have a look at it um, for the reality of what it is and what's going on in the space station and what that means for the future of it. And what are we seeing here? Are we seeing a symptom, really, of the broader shift of Russia's role in the international community? No. Well, perhaps, yes. We're, we're seeing um, posturing and, uh, you know, sort of taking a, a bluffing position so that you maybe have a, a better uh, chance to play your hand of cards in the future. I think we're also seeing, you know, the expression, a new broom sweeps clean. I think the new guy had to do something in the job to show that he was different than the old guy, who everyone had discredited by now, a guy named Dmitry Rogozin. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing sort of politics as usual. But the reality of it is uh, they're not leaving the space station for many, many years. Um, at the same time as, as this new guy said, we're leaving sometime after 2024, the guy who, who's actually technical and who runs the, the space station program, who's the director of operations for Energia, he said, we're not going to leave the International Space Station until we have someplace else to go. You know, we're not going to give up something for nothing. And, and the space station is the crown jewel of the Russian space program. They just put their big, super expensive, and their, their kind of most important piece of the space station, their gigantic library, the size of a city bus, it just got docked less than a year ago to the station. So it's their version of like the Hubble telescope or the James Webb telescope. So it would be counterproductive and kind of foolish to think they're about to abandon it. And, and so, um, you know, they're, they're there for many years to come. So I, I think it's important to to look at what is gamesmanship and what is uh, the reality of what's actually happening. So you would guess that this plan for their own space station, that is incredibly unlikely. That's probably posturing as well, giving a sense of reality to the threat. Well, we can look at history. Uh, the Russians had their own space station that actually I helped build back in the 80s and the 90s, which they called Mir. Uh, on my first space flight, I was part of the team flying a space shuttle to, to build an adapter onto the outside of it. Um, they kept Mir in space until after the International Space Station was launched and after people, were Russians included of the other 14 partners, were actually living on the International Space Station. Then they retired Mir. And I'm confident they'll follow the same pattern here. And it is always way harder to actually build things in space than it is to just talk about it or show each other PowerPoints of it. And so far, their new space station is essentially PowerPoint deep. So they, you know, it's going to be a while yet, decades, you know, we're talking decadal kind of complexity to build a, a big station like that. You know, so, so when he said, we're going to leave the space station after 2024, you know, everybody's going to leave the space station sometime after 2024. That that's not really a date at all. It's just a way of of pretending to say something when when it's just you know sort of puffery. And so, why do you think the Russians are oh, making this posturing claim? Well, uh, they've lost a lot of their uh, global, I don't know, respect over the last several months with the actions that they've taken. The, the destructive nature of the choices that Putin and his, his group have made in Ukraine, uh, the, the horrific loss of life, the enormous loss of potential and value and opportunity, the financial implications that's going to have not just for Ukraine, but for the, the rank and file Russian people for many years to come. Um, it, it's, 
you know, it's meeting their internal objectives and, and Putin's agenda, but it, it's quite damaging to them internationally. And, and also they're being punished through sanctions. And so they've tried to do quid pro quo, quo pro uh, sanction flipping wherever they can, but they can't do that completely and cut themselves off. They'll have no economy at all. So, so it puts them in a difficult position. And like anybody who's cornered, you, uh, you tend to, you know, seize at whatever you can, you try and be as tactical as you can. And, uh, and I think this is just a small symptom of that. So we're almost seeing a return to a Cold War state of mind, whereby space becomes symbolic of national greatness. It becomes symbolic of a, a, a separate Russian project in a way, at least in terms of this statement that's being made. Oh, that hasn't changed at all. If you listen to the bluster of his predecessor, he's been saying ridiculous things for years. Just everybody's learned to ignore him. And, and I think the space station, it's an international space station, but each country has their own national agenda naturally and they need to follow that and they need to respond to their own populace and their own policies and so there's always going to be a conflict of of agendas and expectations and national needs that's makes kind of the space station the most beautiful thing despite all that despite a history of of the second world war with some of the partners and the cold war with some of the other partners we have still found a way to cooperate 24 hours a day and are still doing that uh, seven days a week for almost 30 years on the space station project and for 26 years or whatever, 24 years, I guess, actually with hardware and space together. So, yeah, I mean, you have to take everything, I think, with the with the uh, the lens of history. I was a Cold War combatant. My latest book, in fact, is is about the Cold War in space. So, I, you know, I've got a deep perspective on this and. And I think this is just, a, a, you know, the current ripple of geopolitics. But meanwhile, we're exploring the universe together and have a long time, peaceful, scientific research presence orbiting the world. So in terms of the Russians currently on the space station, then daily life just completely as normal, no real disruption to their work or anything along those lines. I spoke with them this week, not all of the crew, but uh, the, I spoke specifically with one of the American crew members this week via email <clears throat> back and forth. I mean one of the Russian cosmonauts and one of the European astronauts did a spacewalk together uh, a little over a week ago, uh, wearing Russian spacesuits. Um, and, you know, the, the, the cooperation talking to them is just like it always is. And, you know, everything needs sort of a, a bit of a filter. When, when you're going around the world 16 times a day, you see the places where people are, are saying, loudmouth things and where people are behaving extremely badly but in the next 92 minutes you also see everybody else and and it it helps put the kind of the the extremities of the world into into perspective the places where there's there's some sort of a spike of behavior it fits into the reality of the generically peaceful nature of the other nearly eight billion of us on the on the surface and and that is clear to the crew of the space station, whether you're from Europe or from America or from Russia, and, and you know, politicians come and go. And Chris, before we let you go, I have to ask you, tell us a bit about what it's actually like up there for the astronauts, for the people working up there. It's an enormous amount of work and it's a life of service. I mean, you, we work 16 hour days, seven days a week for six months. It's magnificent, personally. You're weightless, and you're getting to know the whole world like your backyard, and you go through the world's aurora, and and you're it, it's it's sort of like a, a, a magical place because you can fly like a superhero, but you're working long hours, and and you're talking to mission control in Moscow and Munich and Houston and Montreal and Tokyo, and everybody's pulling at you. Uh, but I've been lucky enough to fly in space three times. It is one of the great human quests and unknowns as we try and discover and understand the rest of everything else. And to be one of the people directly involved in that, you know, it, it's a big responsibility, but it's also very childlike and, and magnificent. And that's what the six or seven people are going up there right now. Mm -hmm.